gotta catch them all. So the previous problem, aka gotta catch a lot of them, was actually just a whole bunch of Pokemon flavor text on top of something called the max coverage problem. This problem, aka gotta catch them all, is just a whole bunch of Pokemon flavor text on top of something called the min set cover problem. So before we get into the details of the approximation algorithms and proof bounds on both of these problems, let's first make sure that we have an intuitive understanding of what each problem is asking and what the differences are, because they are pretty similar. So recalling from the previous problem in the max coverage problem, we were given a number m, which represented the number of trainers we had, and each trainer came with a set of Pokemon, and we were also given a number k, which represented the size of a team we wanted to pick. The setup for the min set cover problem is pretty similar. We're still going to be given a number m with trainers and Pokemon, but we are not going to be given any number k. We're still going to want to select a team, but what we're doing is slightly different. In this problem, we were maximizing the number of Pokemon we had overall. So given that we had to select a team of size 2, we wanted to maximize how many Pokemon we got. And as we saw in a previous example, by picking Jesse and Misty, we maximize this, and we could have also picked James and Misty. In the min set cover problem, we have to select all the Pokemon. We've got to catch them all. So we aren't really trying to maximize the number of Pokemon. We know that we've got to catch them all. Instead, we're trying to minimize the number of trainers needed to do so. So you might have already noticed from this example that in order to catch all the Pokemon, we are in fact going to need all three trainers, Jesse, James, and Misty, in order to cover all of the Pokemon. Just to make sure we've really got this problem down, let's reset and modify it a little bit. So if I get rid of Arbok here, bye bye to this Pokemon. And now let's try solving it. You might have noticed that we only need James and Misty, and we can cover all of the Pokemon. So we could have added Jesse on our team and we still would have covered all of the Pokemon, but our goal is to minimize the number of trainers. So the optimal solution here is James and Misty. Cool, now that we've got an intuition for what both of these problems are doing, let's think about the algorithms for them. So in the previous problem, we had this algorithm and we proved that this algorithm, which is just a simple greedy algorithm, is a one minus one over E approximation. Our goal in this problem is going to be to come up with a new algorithm and show that whatever algorithm we come up with is an LN size of X approximation where X represents the set of all of the Pokemon overall. Since these two problems are so similar, a good starting point is actually just to copy over this algorithm we had from the previous problem and modify it to fit the new restrictions. So for starters, the input that we're given in the min set cover problem doesn't have a number k in its input, so we should get rid of that. And that will definitely affect this loop. So in the previous version, we ran the loop k times to fill up our team of k trainers. But in this one, we aren't given a number k, and our goal isn't to fill up a team of k trainers, our goal is to cover all of the Pokemon in the set x. So we can change this condition to be keep adding a trainer to your team until u contains all of the Pokemon x. Once we do that, just making these two changes, hopefully it's clear that this algorithm does indeed solve the min set cover problem. Now the question becomes, can we prove it is in fact an ln size of x approximation? Before we do that, let's make sure we understand what that actually means. So coming back to this problem, it's going to be a little bit different because here we were maximizing the number of Pokemon that we selected. So we wanted to show that the number of Pokemon selected from the algorithm was at least this fraction of the optimal number of Pokemon. So the number of Pokemon selected from our algorithm was the set U. And we wanted to show that the size of u was greater than or equal to this fraction of the optimal number of Pokemon you could cover. Here, we're trying to minimize the number of trainers, not Pokemon. So if k star is the optimal number of trainers, well, the number of trainers returned from our algorithm is going to be the size of t. And since we want to show that this is an ln size of x approximation, we want to show that the size of t is less than or equal to ln size of x times k star, the optimal number of trainers. So now the question becomes, how do we bound the size of t? A nice thing to note from this algorithm is that the size of t is just going to be the number of iterations that this loop runs. And this is because at each iteration, we just add one more element to t. So if we can bound the number of iterations in this algorithm, then we can bound the size of t, which is exactly what we want to do to show that this is an ln size of x approximation. So what information do we have on the iterations of this algorithm? 
Turns out from the previous problem, in part 2 we did that whole big induction proof, which showed that the number of uncovered Pokemon at iteration i is less than or equal to 1 minus 1 over k raised to the i times the size of the optimal set of Pokemon we could have covered. We can do a really similar induction proof for this problem and get that the number of uncovered Pokemon at iteration i is less than or equal to 1 minus 1 over k star raised to the i times the size of the set x, which is all of the Pokemon. So we're not going to reiterate the induction proof because it's going to use some of pretty much all the same logic, but just to go over the differences between these two. Here, k was the number of trainers we wanted to pick for our team, so that was fixed from the input right here. u star was the optimal set of Pokemon we could have selected. In this proof right here, k star is going to be the optimal number of trainers we could possibly select, while x is the thing that's fixed from the input. x is just the union of all of these s sets. Okay, once we have this fact, how can we use it to bound the number of iterations, which will ultimately bound t and get to what we want to show? Well, if we want to bound the number of iterations, well, we run this loop until all the Pokemon are covered. So the question becomes, at this iteration, are all of the Pokemon covered? Well, let's check it out. At iteration i, we're at this. So at iteration ln size of x times k star, let's just plug in that for i, and we would get this. And this whole expression is going to be strictly less than this. And the way that we proved this inequality is using the same trick from part 3 of the previous problem, where we know that 1 plus z is strictly less than e to the z, so we can just pick z equal to negative 1 over k star to get this inequality. And this whole thing simplifies and just is equal to 1, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So the number of uncovered Pokemon at iteration ln size of x times k star is strictly less than 1, which means all the Pokemon were covered at this iteration. And we know that when all the Pokemon are covered, that's when we exit and we return t. So t is bounded by this number right here, which is exactly what we wanted to show to show that this is an ln size of x approximation, and we are done.